The Royale is one of my favorite grinds. It's definitely a more advanced grind than we give it credit for. What makes it difficult is there's a lot of weight balance and a lot of commitment and a lot of new muscles that you're using to keep yourself solid that you don't use in any other grind. So today we're gonna to learn how to do the Royale. I'll walk you through what the Royale is, what protective gear you need so that you don't hurt yourself too bad when you're learning, what skate parts you need to make it a little easier for you to learn Royales, and then look at some common issues that I have doing Royales and how to fix them. Now, I'll warn you, this video is gonna get a little geeky. If you're just looking for a jump on the rail, slide down, and then throw up a peace sign to your homies sort of video, this isn't for you. We're gonna talk about sole plates and frame combinations and what sort of angles they create and why that matters in learning Royales and which combination creates the best style. If that's all stuff that you just don't care about, feel free to find another video. But if you're interested in that sort of stuff, or if you've tried Royales and you just can't figure out why they're not working for you, stay tuned, this is gonna be a fun ride. So at its core, the Royale is a standard groove trick. Physically though, the muscles that you use for the Royale are more similar to a sole grind than a front side. A lot of people do Royales with the same foot that they use for sole grinds. For me, it felt more natural to learn it like a front side. Maybe just the spin direction versus the muscle direction. Either way, try both ways and see what feels right for you. Let's get into some of the geekier stuff. So first of all, it is super important that you wear protective gear whenever you're trying to learn a new trick. The most important piece of equipment you can wear when learning a new trick or when skating in general is your helmet. It doesn't matter how good of a skater you are, sometimes accidents happen. And if you fall and hit your head, it could be a serious injury. Wearing a helmet might keep you out of the hospital and let you skate another day. Learning Royales, you're going to slip out a lot trying to get your balance. And when you slip out, you're probably going to brace yourself with your hand. Wearing a wrist guard will keep your wrist from getting hurt. I wear the Ennui City Brace. They're the best wrist guards that I've found that have a little bit of protection and some support on the front and the back of the wrist. The knee pad isn't super important. I wear knee pads whenever I skate, but you're not gonna slip out too much on your knees. Maybe when you're learning and you slip out on top of a ledge, you'll hit your knees, but you can get away with a fairly lightweight knee pad you're not gonna do serious damage to your knees learning this. My shins are destroyed from slipping out from Royales. I've slipped out on rails, I've slipped out on ledges, I've ended up having to get stitches. Wear a shin guard, take out a little insurance for your shins, there's nothing worse than a split shin. It's always easy to blame your equipment when you can't land a grind. But in this case, it might actually be the equipment that's causing you problems. I review a ton of skates, and I never have any issues landing soul tricks. But when it comes to Royales, every skate is a little different. Let's compare two popular skates, the Razor's SL and the Rossi's Majestic 12, so you can see what I mean. Now this is the Razor's SL, and it's probably one of the easiest skates to learn Royales in. If you look at the sole plate, it's nice and wide, with the groove starting way out here. And the frame is sunken into the sole plate, making this groove even lower. If you look at the Rossi's Majestic 12, you'll see that the sole plate is fairly narrow, but the frame is fairly tall, creating a more steep angle in order to do Royales. Now remember, this doesn't matter about the boot. It matters about the sole plate and the frame combination. Let's take a look at some of the other popular skates on the market.
comes to gear, we need to talk about cuffs. Now, a proper Royale, you don't bend your ankles much at all. It's all in the knees. But when you're learning, it's okay to cheat a little bit, push your weight down, and get a little bit of extra wiggle out of that cuff. A stiffer cuff is going to be more difficult to learn Royales on than a squishy cuff. The USD Sway typically has a fairly squishy cuff. And what that means is instead of using only your knees to get low, you can push down a little bit on this boot and push the sole plate down to the object. On the other end of the spectrum is the Adapt. The cuff is part of the boot and it is super stiff, which means you're not gonna be able to cheat with your ankles. You're gonna to have to earn every Royale by bending your legs and getting really low. So let's learn how to do a Royale. Today I'm gonna to be skinning the Adapt sole plates with a 50-50 prime frame. This combination works really well for the way that I do Royales. I can squat down and I feel like I'm getting really low, but I don't have to overcommit and risk slipping out. Now, a Royale is one of the harder tricks to do on a low object, like a practice rail or a curb. I always like to recommend people try it on something about 12 to 14 inches tall. For me, that's enough height that I can pick up my feet and squat down without lowering my body to squat down. I usually recommend people learn new grinds on ledges instead of rails. It's just a little bit safer. You've got the whole top area to catch yourself. If you can find a box like this with raised coping, that's the best situation. Where a lot of people screw up learning Royales is they think about them as a front side. And it totally makes sense. You know, a front side, you're on your inside edges. And on a Royale, you've still got your inside edge. This foot doesn't change but you go to your outside edge on your back foot. The problem is the weight distribution is completely different for a front side versus a Royale. So a Royale is more like a sole grind than it is a front side. So when you're jumping on a rail doing a front side, you're gonna lead with your front foot and your back foot is going to trail. If you're doing a sole grind, you're gonna lead with your sole foot and your front foot is just kind of there for balance. Now a Royale is very similar to this stance. All of your weight is on this back foot, maybe 20% of your weight is on the front foot, and this is the leg that's doing all of the work. So I always like to teach the Royale by the stance first. You're gonna land in that pose, that stance, on the object. And if you can always lock on with that stance perfectly, you're never gonna get wheel bite, you're never gonna have an issue, you'll be able to do Royales with a flat setup, doesn't matter what you've got. Land that stance perfectly and you'll lock on properly. Now the way to learn the Royale stance, start with your legs about shoulder width apart. And instead of just twisting yourself over like this, as you can see, if you do that, you start tilting back and your center of gravity is all the way in the back, you're gonna slip out. And that's where you end up bracing yourself with your hand or ending up slipping out and getting your shin. Instead, Think, push this front foot out a little bit further. So you wanna stay centered, just like you're standing with your shoulder, shoulder length apart, stay centered and push that front foot out as your foot gets lower. It can be a difficult position to get yourself into, so make sure that you stretch your quads, stretch your hamstrings, get loose so that you can get really flexible. Feet shoulder length apart, keep that center of gravity centered, keep your head above that middle section, and push that front foot out. You wanna create a C with your body. So this foot is a C. This foot is a C. Again, shoulder length apart. Keep your center of gravity over that middle. Don't move your back foot, just twist it. Take the front foot, push it out, and try to compensate. Try to balance as long as you can. It's actually really hard to do, <laughs> but it works those muscles that you're going to need for doing royales. When you're approaching the object, you want to go kind of parallel, but a little bit into it. You don't want to jump over to it. You want to jump and then land. Now, before you jump on, I always like to try stalling on the ground just to get my head into how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do the same approach. Instead of jumping on the object, I'm just going to jump next to it, focusing on front foot ahead, keeping my center of gravity, 
between my feet and push that front foot as far ahead as I can. When you feel like you're ready, you're confident, you know you can do this, you're in that zone, just jump on the object and give it a shot. All right, so a few common issues that I run into when I'm doing royales. The first and the most common for me is I pop out to a front side. That happens fairly often. It's usually because I'm not committing fully to squashing down that back foot. I don't trust myself. I'm worried I'm going to slip out. A couple tricks for that. First, get lower on your approach. The more bent your legs are on your approach, the more bent your legs are going to be when you lock on your grind. I definitely recommend practicing a few stalls just to make sure that you can remind yourself how that position should be when you lock on that obstacle. And finally, it sounds crazy, but more speed. You know, if you don't lock on perfectly, that's fine. But if you have a little bit more speed, you might have the momentum to push yourself so that you can compensate and get that boot down while you're on the grind. It might not be perfect, you might not land perfectly, but it's a good little tip to help you get familiar with the feeling of locking on boot down. The second issue is sliding out. You know, I slide out on my Royals a ton. It takes me a while to figure it out. And there's only really two things that you need to do to fix that. The first, make sure that you're approaching the object with as much speed as the object requires. If you're skating a really fast rail or something that's really waxed, if you're not going fast enough and you jump on, if it's going to be faster than you're going, you're going to slip right out. I do this a lot on down ledges, so I don't compensate for the speed of the ledge on my approach. If you skate a little bit faster and you match the speed of the object, you shouldn't have any problem slipping out. The second thing, and one of the things that took me a long time to learn, is you've got to push that front foot out to compensate for your balance. I am horrible at remembering to push my front foot out, especially on skates that I don't need to get super low on, that I can cheat a little bit on. Pushing that front foot out will allow your back leg to bend more while keeping your center of balance over your body where it should be. That way you won't slip out. If you just try to bend your back leg more, what's probably going to happen is your back foot is going to end up in front of your center of balance and you'll slip out. So what about backside royales? Well, it's the exact same mechanics. You just wanna jump on, fully commit, same pose, push that front foot out, keep your center of balance over your body and match the speed of the object. A back royale is going to be a little bit easier on a rail than a ledge. The reason is you wanna get on top of that object. When you're doing a front royale, you've got this front sole plate that you can kind of lean on a ledge. With a back royale, Usually sole plates don't have that big extra material that you can lean on and that's where you end up getting wheel bite. Even skating and a rocker, I get wheel bite doing back royales. So back royale, same mechanics as a front royale. The only difference is in your approach. You're going to want to do the same almost parallel approach. In this case, you're going into the object. Obviously, it's going to be on the opposite side. When you jump on, you're going to want to open up your shoulders to face away from the object. I always lead with my back foot, make sure that back foot gets on properly, and then spot myself with my front foot. So back foot gets on, front foot, if I can lock my front foot on, I know I won't get hurt too bad. The back foot is just kind of along for the ride. It then takes over the weight and it keeps you balanced on the object. Before learning them, always do the approach, always do the jump and stall, just to make sure that you Got it in your head what you want to do, and then just send it.
The back royale is probably my most favorite feeling tricks. When you can lock on, it's really like surfing in the barrel, like Mitchell Guzan. Just get down there, get yourself set. It's an incredible feeling. So when I'm doing back royale, I don't slip out very much. If anything, I'll pop to a backside more than I'll slip out. And I think that's because I'm always thinking, I don't wanna slip out, push this front foot out as far as I can so that I can compensate for slipping out. I do end up on top of the ledge a lot and that creates wheel bite, even though I skate an air router, because my back wheels end up hitting the top of the ledge and I'll stop. Now the trick to that is just in alignment. So when you're coming up to the ledge, go a little bit more parallel. If anything, a back royale might be a little bit more parallel than a front royale. You don't wanna jump on top of the ledge as much. You wanna jump just on the edge and keep your weight off, but keep your sole plates on. It's a really weird balance. Very subtle difference from a front royale, but that should help you keep from getting wheel bite like I do. The other issue that I have when doing back royales is my back foot sometimes catches up to my front foot. So it's like I'm doing a back slide and my front foot is just kind of along for the ride. I think that's because of matching the speed of the object. So if the object is fast, I need to skate a little bit faster and think push that front foot out more. My front foot gets a little lazy because my back foot is doing almost all of the work. I need to focus on pushing that front foot out, keeping it locked on the object and keep it far away so that that back foot stays where it needs to and doesn't try to meet up with my front foot. So now you know everything I know about learning the Royale. This took me a few years of skating and I don't skate that often, but it took a long time. Don't beat yourself up if this is a hard trick for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I value your feedback. So if there's anything that I could have done differently or ways that I could improve this video, please let me know in the comments.